You also have an interrogation process for writers with the Travis right. technique, right. and it's entitled Meet Your Characters? That's part of it. Because uh, you start out saying interrogation process for writers, which we, there are a lot of techniques within that. And the interrogation process, just to be clear about what it is, is actually interrogating um, a character who lives inside an actor or an individual. So this interrogation process, which can ignite characters inside the actors, we use this with writers, and we show writers how to do this, to actually meet their characters either while, after they've written the screenplay, while they're writing the screenplay, often we've done it, they even have an idea for a screenplay, and they say, we get a call and say, I'd like to do Meet Your Characters, can you help me meet the characters that I have? And so the writer will then describe to us, to Elsha and I, Here, here's the story, here are the characters, we say, fine, we'll gather together some actors who are very skilled actors who we've worked with before, and what we will do with these actors is we will give them, um, along with the writer's understanding of what we're doing, a certain amount of information about these characters. Sometimes it's very little information. Sometimes it's a lot of information. All depends on how developed the writer has gone, how far they've gone in the development of the characters. And we will interrogate these actors as these characters. So we will turn these actors into these characters. That's the interior. And then we will put actually put these characters together. We'll have them interact. We will have the show the writer how not only how to do the interrogation, but allow the writer to actually engage with the characters. So let's say there's three or four characters that we've interrogated, and they're all the characters now. All these actors have become the characters, and now the writer can engage with the characters and ask them questions and interrogate them and start to learn to he will actually meet his characters. Sometimes the writer says, will say to us, I have this idea for a scene I want between the husband and wife. We'll say, great, great, we'll do that during the interrogation. We'll interrogate the husband and wife and we'll put them into that scene. Now there is no scene. There's nothing written, but it's a scene maybe when he comes home and he discovers that she bought the red dress that he told her she couldn't buy or something like that, and he discovers that she bought it, and that's, they have little, inf very little information, but enough information for a scene this is important, for a scene to get started, that's all. There's no more information beyond that. There's no information about what the father, the husband or the wife say or do, and there's no information about how the scene ends. It's just enough to get them into the scene because the important thing about interrogation is once we interrogate an actor as the character, that character <coughs> knows nothing about the script or the story, nothing. Now the actor may know a lot, but the character knows nothing. The character is totally naive. So we can send those characters into a scene, just enough to get the scene started and see what happens, and now the writer is sitting there watching an interaction between two of his characters happen, something he hasn't even written yet. Can we try that now with something that I've we written? Can, we, we can, can try, try that. And, and keep in mind I'm not a professional writer here, so this is gonna be a very, very, light story. Um, so my character that I've come with, up with is, her name is Jill. She's 26 years old, she's unmarried, and she has a seven-month-old baby with a man named Jack. Um, so because of some life issues, Jill and Jack have lost their right to stay at Jill's grandmother's home, mm -hmm. where they were all living. And then after being kicked out of there, they move into Jack's brother's home. And Jack's brother is kind of several steps up. He has a stable job and a family life. But before you know it, Jill and Jack are then again asked to leave. Um, and they have with their baby, baby Maya. And so now they've been asked to leave two places. Mm -hmm. um, so before Jill fell into this situation, she um, had planned on going to chef school and she was mm -hmm. always artistic. This situation you mean pregnancy? Uh, and meeting Jack. Okay. I, I think Jack came before the pregnancy. 
That's good. It wasn't an immaculate conception. No, yeah. No, okay. no. But the, the, you said this situation before she got into this relationship. With this Jack. relationship, right? Yeah. And and then this baby, and then being bounced around from these different. She homes. wanted to go. To, she wanted to be a chef. Yeah, she wanted okay. to be a chef, and she was very artistic. And um, unfortunately, some of her demons got the better of her, and she met Jack while attending night school for this this chef sort of career. And they both fell into the world of partying and it got the better of them. So now here they are. They've been kicked out of their second place with a seventh month old baby. And uh, I want to get to know Jill better. Okay. And this, uh, Karen, is your creation. Is this, this character is your creation? Yeah, just okay. for the sake of this interview. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. it's not like I'm writing some. No, but it's your creation. It didn't come yeah. from something else. No, no. Okay. Just Jack and Jill or, you know, th those are. Those are used elsewhere, but yeah. So, so now you want to meet that character. Yeah, I want to meet that character. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. So I need to talk to Jill. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to be? Am I Jill or? This is where Jill, Jill lives inside you. Okay. So I need to talk to Jill. Okay. Okay, Jill. Okay. Yes. Hi, how, Mark. How old are you? I'm 26. 26. And you wanted to be a chef. I do. You still want to be a chef? I do. I love the cooking channel. Um, I love making yeah. things. Yeah. Like making food mm -hmm. into pastries or cakes or um, casseroles or salad. What what kind of what kind of chef do you want to be? An assortment, maybe less with meat, more vegetarian. More vegetarian, vegan, yeah. But you love cooking. Mm -hmm. So do you cook? But you, but you're you're married now, or you? Are you oh, no. you're not married. No. But you have a child. Correct. Okay. And, but you are still pursuing being a chef. Um, I don't know how I'm going to balance. I don't know. I mean, I want him to watch her, but he. You want him to watch, you want Jack to watch your child, but he won't? I mean, he's not. What is he, what is he doing? He's not reliable. What, what is he doing? Is he working? Not right now. He was. Oh, he's not working. He was. And are you working now? Not right now. And in order to pursue being a chef, what do you have to do? Well, I need to go back and finish these other credits. There's a couple classes I didn't finish. Oh, you got a couple classes you have to finish, and then you get a certificate or a degree or something? Right, no. and then I want to be accepted into this other, like, more professional no. chef school. Okay, and then to move on to a more professional school. So you got a plan. This is, this is, I mean, this is a plan. I, Maya wasn't planned. I didn't say that. Doesn't I said, mean you know, I don't love in her. In terms of chefing, mm -hmm. being a chef, you have a plan. Right, right. That, got, that sort of got interrupted a little bit. A little bit. But, yeah. you know, that happens. That yeah. happens. It happens to a lot of people. So when are you going to start, you know, working on these credits? Well, I need... Like, my grandmother was paying for it, and then... Does Jack love you? In his own way. What does that mean? He has a weird, he has his own way of loving what? What is it? He has, like, trust issues. Trust, trusting we, what? We both do. It's not just him. I have trust issues. Can you trust him? Not with money, no. Not with money? I mean, he... Do you want to marry him? <sighs> If he if he stops drinking, I do. If he stops, oh, he's got a drinking problem. Yeah, he's got a drinking problem. He doesn't have a job. You can't trust him. Why are you with but him? He's a good guy. He's a good guy for what? Does he watch after Mia? Does he want you to go back to chef school? I think he gets jealous. Does that he I'm meet want you to there. go back to chef school? He's jealous. I'm going to meet someone there. He, oh no, he's jealous. You're going to meet someone. So he wants to keep you at home. Because he saw my instructor and I were working and he just said like, I don't like the way you stare at him and he stares at you. Is that why he was so excited when you got pregnant? You I know don't know how excited he was? Is that his way of keeping you at home, Jill? Why does he want to keep you at home? He's not doing anything. When you're at home with me, what, what, where's Jack? He's watching TV. He's watching TV. He needs his time to watch sports and drink and, and just be like... Is that what he time. says or is that what you say? Well, I want to respect him and his wishes. Jill, do you respect him and his wishes to stay home and watch TV and drink beer with his friends? Is that what he does? No. I mean, I, I, I mean yeah, that's what he does, but I don't... Why were you kicked out of the house? Um... We got what? some fights. With that, who? Uh, well, he got mad at my grandmother, and my grandmother said that he took some money from, from her. I don't think he did. 
I think it was somebody else, but she blames him. Do you him. think he could have? Maybe. Do you think he was capable of that? Yeah, but I, I don't, she doesn't like him. And so anything he does, yeah. like she just automatically wants to blame him. Yeah. And who, during that argument between your grandmother and Jack, right? Mm -hmm. What did you say? Well, How did you defend Jill? Did I guess you I defend just, Jack? I asked him to keep his voice down. He yells at her, and I don't like no, that. No, that's not keeping his voice down. That's not the issue. The issue is she accused him of stealing some money, and she's going to kick him out of the house. Who are you defending? I was defending him. Why? He's just had it rough, and so he Oh, so has what, trouble you have to take people. care of him? You have to protect him? Now you have two children, Jill. You have two children. One's only a few months old. The other one's in his 20s or something. Is this the way the rest of your life is going to go? Do you love your grandmother? I know he can do be a good person. Do you love your grandmother? Yes, I do. She's believed in me when no one She's else She's always did. good to you, wasn't yes. she? Yes. And she took you in when you needed help. Yes. When you got pregnant and you didn't know where to go. She protected you. And then you protected him against her. If you left Jack with Mia, could you go back to live with your grandmother? She says she won't give me any more money. I didn't ask you that. Could you live with her? Maybe. Would she watch Mia? She loves Mia. Yeah, she's been she's been willing to watch her, but she doesn't like his drinking, so she doesn't. No, no, no. I, I didn't say him. He's not going back. You're going back with Mia. Would she let you live with her? You and Mia. But then he'll just be gone. I know he'll be gone. Would, it's not an answer. Would she let you live with her? Yeah. Would she watch Mia for you? Would she let you go back to school? Would she support you the way Jack doesn't? What do you want, Jill? I just want us all to be happy, the three of us. Well, that's great. Everybody wants that. What are you going to do? But I think that with the right time, he can be better. Right time for what? Just if he, what? he just needs someone to believe in him. No one believed in him. And so he needs people to believe in him. No one believes in him. So I believe in him. So it's your job to believe in him. And do you believe in him? If he could just stop. No, no. Do you believe in him? It's easy to say you believe in someone if they stop all the horrible things they're doing. Anybody can say that. Do you believe in him now, having not stopped anything? He's still drinking. He still doesn't trust you. He's horrible with money. He's not going to support you. He's not going to watch the child for you to go back to school. He's not doing any of that. Do you believe in him? He's in Do you a want negative to be, place. What's that? He's in a negative place right now. He certainly is. Do you believe in him? Do you want to be with him, Jill? I believe in do, him. Do you want to be with I him? I do want to be with him. Why? Because we, you know, things were better before, like, you know, his current behavior and he just had more, he was just fun and, and I think that he just needs some time to, to become a better person. You know, he didn't have a lot of role models growing up and I know that's, I can't like use that as an excuse, but I just think that if someone believes in him, he will turn it around. If someone, and that someone happens to be you, but you don't believe in him. Some days I it's do. It's clear that you don't believe in him. Some days I do. Oh, some days. Oh, that's great. How about 100% believe in him? 100% love him? 100% well, support him? He changes when he drinks. He so you can, I got it. He becomes I got someone it. else. So it, he says he just wants to have a beer every now and then and watch Jill, sports. And so. if you could wave a ma magic wand, what would you ask for? That we would get married and that he would stop drinking and that we would both get jobs. And we wouldn't have to rely on my grandmother. That you would get married? Yeah. Does he want to get married? Do he says want, one day. What's that? He says one, one day. day. I mean, his parents weren't married. 
So what? So, and, and that doesn't mean anything. So he doesn't believe in the institution of marriage. I see. So he really doesn't want to get married. But you want to get married. Yeah. Does he want to get a job? That was part of the magic wand thing is that he got a job. Does he want to get a job? Have you ever heard him talk about a job that he really wants and that he's willing to go for it? What does he want to do besides sit home and drink and watch TV? Like I said, he's just in a bad place right now. And then if it could just get him in a better place, then Jill, he you're want. living with a parasite. You know that. He's going to suck everything out of you. Everything. All your energy, all your joy, all your talent, all your hopes, all your dreams. But Until I don't want, you're sucked dry, and then he'll probably leave you. But I don't want Mia to grow up without a father. I want her to have him there. I, I mean, I, I know he's not perfect. I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect. So I can't expect him to be perfect. You can expect, expect him to be better than he is. You can expect him to respect you. You can expect him to love you. You can expect him to support you. You can expect him to sacrifice things that are important to him to help you. If it's a marriage, just being married won't make it any better. You know that. It'll be just the same as it is now. Well, he says he loves Mia. And I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. Do you love Mia? Absolutely. Do you want her to grow up with a father like that? Just because he's the biological father, he's the only choice? I just don't want to do that to her. Do what to her? I don't want her to not know who raised her. I mean, like who, who her, her dad was. I don't want her she to have that. She can know him. Thing. She can know him. Like question mark. She can know him. How are you going to protect Mia? I know one day she'll be strong and she'll see that he does love her. He's just going through some, he just, he's not perfect. He has issues, but I'm not perfect either. So I can't totally just expect him to be perfect, you know? He says that I nag him all the time and that um, I'm just always on his case. Okay. So, you, so, you're, so you're going to um, hang in there? Yeah, I thought about maybe moving back to my grandmother's Great. with Mia and then, but okay. I don't know where he's going to go. So, well. But do it. You can do that. Move back with your grandmother. You're a beautiful, strong, vibrant young woman who wants to be a chef. You have everything in front of you. You can make any choice you want to make. Just make it. There's nothing stopping you. But what's going to happen to him? He doesn't have anywhere to go. Who knows? That's his problem. I just don't want him to become more self-destructive than he already is. It may happen, but it won't be your fault. He's a great father, isn't he? Like I said, when he's in a good place. When he's in a good place, he's a great father. Seems like it. I mean... And you're happy when he's a great father, right? When he's in a good place. Yeah. So stay with him. Just stay with him. Maybe it'll work out. Who knows? He just, he doesn't like it when I like not, and I'm not telling him where I'm going and he wants to like know like where I am all the time. And so it's just hard for me to like have a life and then he's there and I, you know. If, just, you, if you could tell Jack anything you wanted, without fear of what would happen, anything, what would you tell him? I just want to see him be better and believe in himself and just, he doesn't need to always have like a beer, it seems like every hour with... That's what you want to tell him? I just, I want to see him like be the person I know he can be. What do you really think of him? I think that he just never had anyone believe in him, but I see a difference. Now, what do you think of him? What do you, Jill, 
think of Jack? Um, I don't know. He's just become so negative. I'm going to ask you one last question. If you had to do, had it to do all over again, would you have gotten involved with Jack? No. No. I would have stayed at the school and, and just okay. kept going. Okay. Now we're going to stop. Okay. <laughs> so, what was that like? Painful. Painful? Yeah, I feel bad for Jill. Okay. She's stuck, you know, and, um, you know, she doesn't have any resources and she's relying on this grandmother and, um, you know, maybe Jack's a good guy, but she's not, that's not her fault. It's not, she can't fix him, but um, she's like stuck in this pit. And you're right, she's taking mm -hmm. care of two children. And um, I guess I want her to have a backbone. You want her to have a backbone. Yeah. But the, since, since we did this because of Meet Your Characters, right? Mm -hmm. And this is not about you, Karen, playing Jill. This is about you meeting the Jill that's existing inside you. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, were there any surprises? How much maybe she made excuses for all these things or mm -hmm. like you brought them out to light and she just kept like making excuses for them. Like if only, if only, if only. Sure, in a perfect world, but in a perfect world, and if it just needs time, and all the all the excuses that she makes for him, which I don't think she would make if it wasn't for Mia. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, that's true. Because the child changed everything. Right. Not getting together with Jack. It was the child. Right. Changed everything, and it changed her perspective. That's true. So and protecting him. Protecting him because you're really protecting her. And the whole thing of you want her to have a father. I said, well, yeah, she can have a father. There's more than one out there. That's true. <laughs> that could be the father. But that's, you know, because lots of times when we do this, um, this process with the writer, treating you as the writer of this story, is that the writer will discover things about their protagonist or any character in this story that they never imagined. Just because it's done through the interrogation process where the character is actually speaking. Now it's coming from within the writer, but it's because of the way the process works of the very intense probing questions. That's why it's called interrogation, probing questions about who you are. And there's something unique that I've been experiencing for years now for both writers and actors when they go through this process because they're under the pressure of the character having to answer immediately. Not under the pressure of, oh, let me think about that. I'll journal about that. Let me think about, let me think about what Jill would do in that circumstance. That, that can't play at all. What plays is Jill's being asked and you're playing and you are being Jill and Jill has to answer. And so Jill, I'm sure that you experienced that. Like I have to, I can't, yeah. I, Karen can't stay. Oh, excuse me, I don't know the answer to that. Can we go on to another? No, there's, no, there's no room for that. Jill has to answer. And so many times you're surprised by what, the, what comes out of the character or the character's perspective or point of view or something. And we've done this many times where writers have said, my God, I didn't know he or she thought that. It's amazing. No, it's not because of something I do. In other words, I'm not injecting information into the character at all. I'm just questioning the character and the character has to answer and you're, in, and you're free to say anything you want, any answer you want. So that lots of times there's surprise, but the character does exist inside you because you created that character and you know that character better than anybody. And all we're doing is moving you, the writer, out of the way. So you, I'm, I'm not allowing you, Karen, the writer, to control the character. You just have to sit on the side and watch the character emerge and be questioned and be interrogated and be herself. And you go, wow, that's a different person than I thought. 
I was scared while scared. you were interrogating me because I, I, I saw that my life was like backed into this corner and mm -hmm. that there were no solutions mm -hmm. to it. And, um, you know, it's, it's loose. I, I had thought of a story like this years ago. Um, I never really did much with it, but it was kind of based on people that I would see um, that were like young families that kind of like lived in trailers and different things. And I always wondered like, how did they get there? I'm sure mm -hmm. it's not something they planned. And, um, you know, how do we know that that couldn't have been any of us right there with the with the certain set of circumstances? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you'll just see someone on the street and you just like start wondering about their life. Mm -hmm. And um, just, just, yeah, I felt like, I think I felt more like Jill than I ever had. I actually had a different name for the character before, but mm -hmm. um, we changed it because it was so, it was a different name. It was like very unusual. But I did, I felt very scared and like I had no choices and no uh, no say, no agency in my own life. Mm -hmm. And so you were showing me as Jill that like, you know, there's not many places to go with this, <laughs> you know? So yeah, yeah I and, did, it felt and, very And, and a lot of what we did with Jill too is, <clears throat> and this happens a lot in interrogation, is push the character up against their obstacles and it's um, the obstacles that are inside them, the fears. I mean, Jill's fear of not having Jack around, which is really irrational, but understandable. Understandable, because that's what happens. But like how, because uh, yeah, even when I said move back with the grandmother and all that, you and Mia, but you say, well, yeah, but what, what's gonna happen to Jack? I go, Excuse me? I'm giving you an opportunity to get out of a bad situation and all you want to do is get back in it. But just to run into that. So we, you know, it's, it's a matter of pushing the character up against even their fears or their denial or their rationalization or justification and question it. Not saying it's wrong, but just can you explain to me why you think that way? That's all I was doing. Explain that to me. And I could see you going, I, 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 can't, I can't. Well, then we have a problem. <laughs> that's it. Great. And that's, what we, that, and that's what we do with, and now there's one other thing. That process is similar to what we do with writers with the Write Your Life to, except we're interrogating them as themselves at a different time. But it's the same process. And the same, many times the same thing will happen. Even they go, oh, wow, I didn't know that that's what I was thinking back then. And, and what happens when it's with Write Your Life or autobiographical is, and I'm very much aware of this, and I have to be a little more delicate sometimes because I'm actually interrogating you as you. So I have to be much more careful. I can't be as um, aggressive sometimes. Because, but many times what I'm triggering is the truth that has been buried. And the people are surprised that this came out. And they, they can feel that it's true. They can feel that this is what was really going on. They can feel that this was really the fears that they were dealing with. And now they go back to look at the story and they see it in a whole different way because they see their protagonist in a different way. Yeah, and I see this character in a different way now. Good. 